Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of the Learning FreeCAD for Beginners where we're teaching those fundamentals of FreeCAD from a beginner's perspective, learning workflows and giving a practical example whilst we learn those workflows. Today we're looking at sub-assemblies. Now we're going to be using the A2 Plus workbench and the part workbench. We're going to be creating a really super simple sub-assembly with super simple parts. So the example is this very small chest of drawers. So we've got two drawers in here and the receptacle, which is basically two boxes on top of each other. So we can move these drawers in and out. And these drawers are assemblies. So these are sub assemblies and this is a sub assembly as well. So these are two different parts within this chest. So this chest itself is a sum assembly because we can import that into say a desk assembly and that can act as a sub assembly and the sub assembly has assemblies that are attached to it. We're going to be learning how to do those and we're going to be learning simple constraints in there as well. So I'm going to be using the axis constraint to constrain one drawer and the planes coincident constraint to constrain the other drawer. So I hope you're enjoying this series let's have a look at this workflow. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone or at coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So we're gonna start by creating a really simple sub-assembly with the primitive parts in the part workbench. We're gonna later include the A2 Plus in our workflow. We're gonna first start with a new document and create some primitive parts. We're gonna be using the cylinder and the sphere. And these create our draw handle. We're gonna control select the cylinder and control select the sphere and use the fusion from the toolbar to fusion those together as one object. And you can see on the left hand side we have the fusion icon which we can right click and rename and change that to handle. Once we have our handle we can save this as a part. So I'm going to create a new folder and call this parts. In here I'm going to save all my parts for the assembly and we call this one handle. We'll save it and now we can move on to a new document and we'll start to build the base of the draw. We're going to create a cube in there and we're going to resize that cube using the length to give it say 50 millimeters and then we'll give it some depth via the width again 50 millimeters and some height of 25. We're now going to take the top face and use the drop down menu and the part and use the thickness to create a space inside that drawer. Also available from the menu. Let's change this to intersection for the join type and increase this to about 5mm. At the moment it's going outwards. Let's send this inwards by doing a minus 5. It's still a bit wide so I'm going to send it inwards by doing minus 3. And hit OK. Now I've got the thickness in there. Let's create a hole by using the cylinder and right click and transforming this into place. This will create the connection point for our handle. We we'll just change the rotation increments down to 15 and move this into place. Once it's moved into place, we can then use Boolean cut to take this away from this section. So what we'll do is just place it round about the center and we'll adjust that afterwards. Let's hit OK. And you can see that the cylinder is just poking out the front of that face. Let's bring that forwards a bit to make sure we have a successful cut. We're gonna cut that away from that object. So let's take the box and the cylinder, control click those and use the cut. This will create a cut in our object. So created the hole in there. 
It's not centered. If we want to center it, well, we can come in here and click on the cylinder. We know the thickness of the cube. Well, the width and the length is 50 millimeters. So we can take the cylinder and look at the placement and set that up as position along the axis 25. I'm going to save this by first renaming the cut and then just call this box. And now we can save as box. So we've got a handle and a box at the moment. This has got a height of 25. So what we're going to do now is create another box in a new document. So another box or another cube and come in and we'll set the width. We don't want the position. The width is 50 and the length is 50 and the height as 30. So we've got this one here. We're going to hollow this out from the front face. So take the front face and we'll come up and use the thickness from the toolbar or part thickness. Send the thickness outwards and we'll change it to intersection and we'll send it outwards say 2 mil. That's okay that. Take the thickness and rename that to container. And let's save that document as container. So we're building a basically a simple draw system. Now we've got our three parts. Let's create an assembly of these in the A2 Plus workbench. So remember, we have to have it installed on the add-on manager. And you'll find A2 Plus in there. I'm going to come over to the A2 Plus workbench, which I've already got installed. And let's close these documents. So let's get rid of these documents and create a new one. And I'm going to call this, save this straight away as chest assembly. I'm going to start importing parts in here. So let's come in and click on the add shape from external file. Also available from A2 plus add shapes from external file. And let's go to the container and double click that. So we're pulling in the container from here, the one we've named and import that. So we've got this one here. It's a static shape. So it's got a fixed position of true. So we must have one shape that is fixed in there. So that won't move. And I'm going to create another one of these as well. And we're going to constrain it to the top. We can do that by clicking on it and coming up to the create a duplicate of the part, or we can import it again. Add shapes from external file, double click the container and select the container. If we had more than one shape in here, then we can select multiples. Let's import that. This one will be attached to our mouse pointer, so I can drop that anywhere I want, and then I can start constraining. For constraints, I'm going to use the edge here, and control select this edge, and align the axis with those two, and set that, and we'll do the same on the other side, so I can use this side as well so I can take those two. There's many ways of doing this. So we take that one and actually I may take the points. So at the moment I can move this out of the way. So if I click on it and use the move and that's the same as right click transform. I can move that out of the way and I can take say this point here if I zoom in and if I grab this point, so I've grabbed that vertex and control clicked this vertex, I can use a point on point constraint and I set that. I could have done the same on this side as well. 
So we've got those joined together. I'm now going to save this. And that's one sub-assembly. Let's come over to a new document and create another assembly. And this is going to be the draw. So let's save this and call this draw. Import with shapes. And we want the box. Select that, import. And we want the handle, so we'll import that as well. And click on the handle and import that. So we've got this one mobile. Let's select the circle and this circle. And I'm going to come in and select the inside circle, so this one here. So make sure we get that circle. We've got the circle and circle constraints. Let's add that constraint. If it's round the wrong way, then we can use flip direction. That's round the right way. And we'll set that. So we have our draw now and we can save that. So we have two sub assemblies in here, or we have a sub assembly and our main assembly. So I can come into the chest assembly and come up to A2 plus and add a part from external file. Click the draw and our draw comes in. So we've got our draw here. With this draw, I can constrain say this edge against the inside edge, this one in here. Let's zoom right in because it makes it easier to select and use the axis constraint. And we'll set that, so that's in there. And we'll move that, right click transform, or we'll just use the move icon from here, move selected part, move that out. And we'll also do this side as well. So take this edge and the edge within here, control click that, and constrain the axis and set that. Now you notice it hasn't moved inwards. And that's because, well, the axis is in line with here. So we've got this axis in line with here. So when I move a part onto constraint using the solver, I can now push this in here. And we'll just push it in, like so. That's had another draw, but let's use different constraints this time. Let's come out to A2 Plus and add part from external file again. And click the draw and open it up. So we've got the draw here. I'm going to use the plane constraint. So the first one I'm going to pick is this side, this plane here. And control click this face here, so we've got two planes. And what we want to do is make them coincident to each other. Come up to the constraints. And we've got this plane coincident constraint. I select that and set. That plane is now coincident with the selected plane. So these two planes are together, these two faces. And we just do the same with the bottom. So this bottom here and control click this bottom and make the constraint, planes coincident and accept. So that's a much easier constraint to add. We don't have to come in and try and get the edges. And again, if we try to move this draw, which is under constraint with the move selected part under constraint, it will move in and out. It will also come out the back as well, but that's because it's all on the same plane. We just have to be wary of that. So that's it. We've got a sub assembly imported into another sub assembly. So if you think about it, we could create yet another assembly and import this whole lot, this chest assembly into that as well. So I hope that's given you a quick introduction with sub assemblies in the A2 Plus Workbench. It's a very simple example, but it's enough to get you started and get those creative juices running. Hope you enjoyed that, and I hope to see you again in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone, or at coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-Zero. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. 
And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.